Hey everyone, so you probably had some time off over the holidays and that might be a great time for you to catch up on some reading. With the number of books that I read this year, there are three that really stand out and I wanted to do just a very quick review for you and kind of whet your appetite and see if this is something that you might be interested in. Interestingly enough, each one of these authors is a woman and for a number of chapters, it's written from the perspective of a woman in business. And I think it's key, of course, for women readers, but especially men. Now, the first book, it is Imagine It Forward by Beth Comstock. Fantastic. And you've probably seen Beth on LinkedIn uh, talking about innovation. This book really describes her journey, uh, particularly in GE, as she led many innovative initiatives. And she uses those stories as learnings and uh, can help anyone who's involved in making change in their organization. And it's just chock full of great stuff. Now, what I did know is that Beth is an introvert. Now, if you watch her on her videos, you may not realize that, but the truth is she is. And I thought that's interesting because many people say that introverts, you know, can't be really successful leaders or entrepreneurs or change agents, but really introverts can be just that. Um, I'm one of them. Now, what does she do as an introvert? Well, in one particular section, she talks about how there are some advantages to being an introvert. Uh, she says that we, introverts, may not always speak up at meetings, but we're not hogging the conversation either. And you can bet we're processing the discussion thoughtfully, and that's the truth. Later on, no doubt, you'll hear from introverts. But she also has some best practices or tips from introverts so that we can contribute at meetings. Here's my favorite. She says she challenges herself to ask one question or make one comment during a meeting, thinking about it in advance so that it doesn't distract her from you know, paying attention to the conversation. She goes, she goes on to say that bosses and colleagues who know this about me will also help by asking what her opinion is. And so she can easily pivot and contribute to the conversation. So really cool tip for uh, introverts out there. Um, but this is chock full of wonderful tips and best practices for change agents or innovators who really seek to make uh, a difference in their organization. So that's book number one, Imagine It Forward by Beth Comstock. You definitely want to get it. Now, book number two, you've heard a lot about this year. It is by none other than Brene Brown, and it is entitled Dare to Lead. Um, in my opinion, this should be in every business uh, class or business school. It is full of great best practices for leaders. And I have to tell you, a lot of this has to do more with emotional intelligence than having to know it all, so to speak. Um, it takes courage to be a leader these days, and it takes empathy as well. And she also focuses on a very important qualification or uh, quality, and that's communication. And it got me thinking about, you know, reading Shakespeare early on in life. Um, I used to love it. And, you know, when you do, you get a sense that, I tell you, almost every disaster in a Shakespeare play happens because of a miscommunication, right? But, you know, that's what happens in business a lot. Um, a lot of trouble or disaster, sometimes at a Shakespearean level, happen because people aren't clear in their communication. So in the book, she talks about being clear is kind, and being unclear is, you guessed it, unkind. And I love the way she introduces this in one of the earlier chapters. Um, she says, feeding people half-truths to make them feel better, which is almost always about making ourselves feel better or comfortable, is unkind. Not getting clear with a colleague about your expectations because it feels too hard, yet holding them accountable or blaming them for not delivering is unkind. Talking about people rather than to them is unkind. She, she goes on to say, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. Um, this is just a very small nugget of wisdom and she goes on to really explore this subject. But uh, as you can see, it's quite interesting and certainly applicable to a business setting. So believe me when I tell you, you want to pick this book up. It is absolutely fantastic. A Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. Okay, the third book, and probably my favorite, um, it is by an author who I had heard of before. Um, her name is Natalie Molina Nino, and she's written a book called Leapfrog, The New Revolution for Women Entrepreneurs. Now, you may have heard the statistics in regards to women-owned uh, businesses, um, 
women entrepreneurs are coming on to the scene at a rate uh, faster than we've seen in the past, particularly women of color. However, uh, those same women are less likely to get funding from venture capitalists and miss out on a number of opportunities that men uh, typically get. And so what she has done is provided best practices or tips or hacks that will enable you to leapfrog, right? Um, so that you can advance and get the kind of support and funding that you need as a woman entrepreneur. This book is fantastic. She not only talks about her own experiences, but she also takes on the experiences of others who have become um, part of her close community or, or her tribe. As I know you've heard about tribes and how important they are. And uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Now, I just want to share just a piece of this with you um, and talk about how important this is for women, but especially men. Um, if you're a man and you are in a position of authority, particularly you are one who can um, appropriate funding for a company or a startup, you need to keep this in mind. Um, she goes on to say that she doesn't want to continue to speaking at panels and say in 10 years, have someone ask how many women of color you fill in the blank, right? And she has to say the answer to instead of zero. That's not the kind of progress she's looking to make. Um, she goes on to say, but if we keep doing what we've always done, uh, progress will put her along as it has for decades pointing to a future in which U.S. women don't achieve pay parity with men for another 134 years. Clearly something has to change. And so what she does is provide best practices and tips to begin to make those changes for yourself. So if you're a woman and you own your own company, I beg you to pick this up. If you're a man, and you are in a position of authority or know some who are, or even if you're not, but can provide support for women, definitely pick this book up. You will not be disappointed. So those are my three books. Um, what are your books that you're going to be reading uh, over the break? Um, what can set you up for success in 2019? Let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested in hearing your feedback. All right. Talk to you guys soon.